There are things in our world that are continually being discovered. New sources of energy, new medical breakthroughs, faster and safer ways to travel, and the list goes on and on. However, discovering and learning new things isn't always easy. In fact, it often comes at a high price for those who first present it to others. For example, during the Middle Ages, people believed that the world was flat. But Galileo was arrested for teaching that the world was not flat, but was a sphere, and that the Earth rotated around the Sun rather than the Sun rotating around the Earth. It was considered heresy since the Bible spoke of the four corners of the earth and everyone could see that the sun rose in the east and set in the west. Hi, I'm Pastor Chester Hitchcock and about 10 years ago I discovered that those who are LGBTQ are not an abomination to God as I had once believed. Of course, this is not a new discovery for many who are LGBTQ+, or their allies for that matter, but it was a new discovery for me as a pastor. As I searched and researched the scriptures, I discovered that there is far more misinformation out there about the gay community than there is true information. So I set out to participate in correcting the misinformation. The new things that I discovered that really wasn't new except for me was so exciting. Even to me, a straight, white, privileged American man, I believed that it would be just as exciting to everyone that I shared it with. How could I be so naive? As a pastor who had retired after about 30 years of service, I had experienced my share of rejection by those who claimed to be conservative Christians guarding what they thought was truth. Why would I think that most people would love learning something new about God's love? If you like learning new things about God's love, subscribe to my channel by clicking that subscribe button anytime during the video, ring the bell, and be sure to choose all to make sure that you get a notification the next time the video is produced. Also, be sure to hit that like button at the end of the video and leave a comment about what you think. At the end of each video, I will have a link to the next video in my series about the LGBTQ community as well as links to other topics. But back to new things. Just like in the Middle Ages, most Christians believed that the world was flat, only a century ago, many Bible believers argued that slavery was biblical and anyone who was teaching emancipation was clearly going against God's word. James Henry Thornwell wrote, quote, Certain it is that no direct condemnation of slavery can anywhere be found in the sacred volume. And by the way, he was correct. Slavery was common both in the Old Testament and the New Testament, and it isn't condemned directly in a single verse. Nevertheless, in both cases, that is, the earth being a sphere and slavery, society led the civilized parts of the world to truth, while the majority of Bible believers lagged behind, or in many cases did everything possible to prevent the progress of knowing God in the world around them even better. Like it or not, history is repeating itself here in the 21st century. For example, Chimera Syndrome is a human condition that is as unfamiliar to most of us as a sphere-shaped planet was in the Middle Ages or the abolition of slavery a century ago. Yet convincing many Bible believers that Chimera Syndrome exists, or for that matter that it's important to understand so that we can understand those around us, is once again the drag on progressing to, ironically, better knowing the God of creation. Chimera Syndrome often happens in humans naturally when two non-identical twins merge in the womb early in their development. If the early embryos fuse together so that the cells of one is absorbed by the other in the early stages of development, they can become one single fetus. This is called fusion chimerism, or tetrachromatic chimerism. Humans with chimera syndrome often don't know it until a medical procedure reveals something such as two separate DNAs, or two different types of red blood cells, or ovaries in a man, or atypical chromosomes just to mention a few. However, for some, the difference is obvious. They may have two different colored eyes, or patchy skin, or differential hair growth, or intersexuality, or gender ambiguity. Here are some documented examples of individuals who are chimeras. 
The Dutch printer Folk Dilemma, if I'm pronouncing name correctly, was expelled from the 1915 national team after she refused a mandatory sex test in July of 1950. Later investigations revealed a Y chromosome in her body cells, and the analysis showed that she was probably a 46XX over 46XY mosaic female. In 1953, a human chimera was reported in the British Medical Journal. A woman was found to have blood containing two different blood types. Apparently, this resulted from her twin brother's cells living in her body. A 1996 study found that such blood group chimerism is not rare. Another report of a human chimera was published in 1998 where a male had some partially developed female organs due to chimerism. He had been conceived by in vitro fertilization. In 2002, Lydia Fairchild was denied public assistance in Washington state when DNA evidence appeared to show that she was not the mother of her own children. A lawyer for the prosecution heard of a human chimera in New England, Karen Keenan, and suggested the possibility to the defense, who were able to show that Fairchild II was a chimera with two sets of DNA, and that one of those sets could have been the mother of the children. In 2002, an article in the New England Journal of Medicine described a woman in whom tetragrammatic chimerism was unexpectedly identified after she underwent preparation for kidney transplant. The transplant required the patient and her immediate family to undergo histocompatic testing, the result of which suggested that she was not the biological mother of two of her three children. In 2009, singer Taylor Mool discovered that what was always thought to be a large birthmark on her torso was actually caused by chimerism. The scientific term chimera that describes these differences, regardless of whether they are observable or not, may not be explainable in holy writ, any more than the other two examples of a sphere-shaped planet or anti-slavery are. The question that 21st century Christians need to consider is how they will deal with the irrefutable evidence this time. Do they hold to binary human existence only as others held to flat earth and pro-slavery theology because it's the only thing that they can find in scripture? Or do they realize that scripture describes the infinite God as much deeper than finite human reasoning can fully comprehend? A 19th century Bible expositor by the name of Ellen G. White once wrote this, quote, The Bible, perfect as it is in its simplicity, does not answer the great ideas of God, for infinite ideas cannot be perfectly embodied in finite vehicles of thought. For many in the LGBTQ community, Chimera Syndrome explains in scientific terms the reality of who they are as certain as the earth revolves around the sun and men are indeed created equal. However, despite all the evidence, the flat earth theory is growing in popularity still in the 21st century and many in our society would fully support going back to a pro-slavery nation. Regardless of where the evangelical as well as traditional Christianity stands on same-sex marriage, society is once again leading in regards to reflecting the God of the Bible when it comes to the LGBTQ plus community by using a biblical principle that is often ignored, forgotten, or overlooked by many believers. It is called the Golden Rule. Do unto others as you would want others to do unto you. That is found in Luke chapter 6 verse 31 and Matthew chapter 7 verse 12. Nevertheless, this desire for marriage equality will continue to be debated as long as the flat earth and slavery issue is, that is, until Jesus comes. But as a nation, marriage equality is coming. Due to God working with mankind when they are seeking a society of equality. As a theologian and a pastor, I am happy to be an ally for those who are Chimera Syndrome in every aspect of their life. Perhaps due to double blood type, they have difficulty passing a paternity or maternity test. 
Perhaps because of their patchy skin, they don't visually fit into their family's identity. Maybe due to their intersex or gender ambiguity, they don't fit the typical binary human categories. However, for Christians, all humans are made in God's image. And salvation exists through righteousness by faith, whether we are red or yellow, black or white, or gay or straight. Unfortunately, if informed Christians are not clear in proclaiming Christ's righteousness to the LGBTQ community, all they will hear will be the voices of politicians courting the support of those who don't know the depth of God's love. Politicians are neither medical professionals nor theologians who are willing to single out people who, for example, change their gender on their license or on their legal ID or any other kind of government intrusion on people's rights, neglecting to clearly and boldly proclaim and demonstrate existence to the gay community because of holding on to misunderstood Bible verses has led to many young people committing suicide. Furthermore, supporting strong-arm regime that leads to bullying and increased hate crimes does not reflect the nation that the American experiment was based on. I, for one, will not remain silent while this happens. And I will do all that I can to help people understand the Word of God more clearly. So if you have enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it, hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, and be sure to choose all so that you can get a notification the next time that I produce a video. I love you all, and God loves you all the more. See you in the next video.